one cheek flushed, pulse 120, temperature 102, record of pains in chest, breathing fast. Diagnosis, pneumonia. Childhood once was a time of peril. Pneumonia, diphtheria, whooping cough, typhoid were killers. Pneumonia is still dangerous, but the death rate has been cut by two thirds with penicillin. Three quarters of the penicillin used in Australia is produced at the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, established by the Commonwealth Government in 1916 when war threatened Australia's supplies of life-saving drugs. The first drug produced, a diphtheria antitoxin, is now only one item in an enormous range of biologicals, life-saving drugs produced from living materials. Vaccines against diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, polio, typhoid, influenza, tuberculosis, smallpox, cholera, yellow fever, insulin for diabetics, penicillin, antivenine against spider bite, and snake bite. Apart from the 60 acres covered by the laboratory buildings, there is a 300 acre farm where drugs are produced to benefit men and animals. Research and production over 25 years have resulted in a steady supply of drugs that mean less suffering for animals and less expense for farmers. Altogether, the laboratories produce some hundreds of different biologicals, all designed to save life. The pattern of the work is a pattern of the knowledge and imagination of scientists, the ability of engineers, and the skill of operatives. One of the recent developments at the laboratories is the production of the Salk vaccine, defense against polio, which struck at more than 2,000 in 1950. Less than 14 months after the successful use of the vaccine in the United States, it was produced at the laboratories. A tissue culture is prepared to feed the polio virus and the virus is added. There are three different types of polio virus, the tiny agents that can kill or paralyze, and all three are needed in a vaccine giving complete protection. The culture of virus fluid, a deadly concentration of the agents that cause polio, is killed with formalin. The killed virus cannot cause the disease or do other harm, but it stimulates the body to fight and beat the disease. All through the process, constant tests and controls make sure that the final vaccine will be safe and effective. Thousands of test tubes contain samples of the batch in production at every stage. There is enough vaccine in a batch to give complete protection to 200,000 people. The millions of doses are the first step in the immunization campaign now well underway, which means that another disease is coming under control. The end of the process is the production of 60,000 ampoules in a batch, and every ampoule is a fighter against disease. Discovery of a cure or a preventive is the beginning of the story, not the end. Production can be an engineering problem. Penicillin was discovered in 1928 but it was not until 1941 that it was produced in useful quantities in England. The Commonwealth Serum Laboratories now produce tons of penicillin each year. 
It is no restricted scientific activity, but a major industrial undertaking. The drug used by doctors in tiny doses, in tablets or hypodermic needles, starts its processing in tanks holding thousands of gallons. Skilled scientists, engineers, tradesmen are at work to give doctors the tools they must have to defeat disease, to save life. Again, the careful process of testing goes on at every stage of production. Tests for purity, tests for accuracy. Although penicillin is produced in such huge quantities, its value in saving life depends on single doses and every dose must be exact to specification. The final product is penicillin in crystals, pounds and pounds of it, looking for all the world like something a grocer sells. But this is no grocery. It is another of the scientists' answers to the threat of disease. The work of the laboratories has no end. Solving one problem means time and opportunity to tackle the next. The research section is investigating diseases from influenza to cancer. The first step is to find and identify the cause of the disease, as years ago scientists identified the pneumococcus that causes pneumonia. It is slow work because it must be sure. Lives depend on these eyes and brains the skill of these fingers, the observations made, the deductions drawn. Check and cross-check. There must be no possibility of final error in work where a mistake can mean death. Venomous bites have killed many people. Commonwealth Serum Laboratories research has produced antivenines to counter spider bite. The sometimes fatal bite of the redback spider now has its antidote. Research continues with the funnel web spider, gathering and analyzing venom to reduce the danger of death. Even the deadly taipan bite can be harmless if treated in time. Doctors of the laboratory staff keep in touch with the medical profession in Australia, getting reports of new needs, telling of the latest developments. In 40 years, the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories have extended their range of production until today they produce a large proportion of all the biologicals needed in the country. Largely through the use of biologicals, the death rate in children under five has dropped by more than three quarters in the last 50 years. Vaccination against diphtheria has been followed by a drop of more than 90% in the yearly death rate. Inoculation against whooping cough has reduced its danger to children. There have been no cases of cholera in Australia for many years. No Australian soldier of World War II was a victim of tetanus. Typhoid fever, once a scourge, is now very rare. With each new discovery and development, the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories extend their investigations with one object always in mind, the saving of life.